In this video, we're going to be talking about one way we can functionalize uh, alkenes, which is by doing the synthesis of alcohols. Now, rem we remember from a previous chapter that alcohols have the structure ROH. And if we look at the general formula for the synthesis of alcohols uh, using alkenes, we'll start with our generic formula for an alkene. Um, and we'll add the simplest alcohol, which is water. Um, we can already see that we'll have our delta positive, our delta negative. And uh, we imagine that we add across the double bond, we're going to add H to one side and OH to another side. Um, similar to the last video, we saw that there's no, if we have a non-functionalized alkene, there's no distinction between which side the OH and the H goes to. Um, but as we saw in the previous video, that uh, Markovnikov's rule will uh, denote that the uh, functionalized group will go to the more substitute portion of the alkene, and that tracks with um, the synthesis of alcohols as well. Um, so we will see uh, three different syntheses of alcohols. We'll see acid catalyzed hydration. So the first one is going to be acid catalyzed hydration. The second one is going to be oxymercuration. Um, and the third one is going to be hydroboration. Um, so this one is oxymercuration. And we'll see what that entails, that synthesis. And then the third one is going to be hydroboration. So uh, acid catalyzed hydration is perhaps the simplest way to synthesize alcohols, um, but it does run into a couple pitfalls, which we will examine here. So acid catalyzed hydration is as such. We'll take, say we'll take a uh, asymmetric alkene. Acid catalyzed hydration is kind of what it seems. It's going to be um, some kind of H2O with acid. So this is often written as H3O plus. This can be written as H2O with H+. Plus. Sometimes they specify the, the acid, so H2O and H2SO4. Anything that's a water and acid. So water and acid will form hydronium in solution, so that's why we often write as H3O+. Plus. Um, we'll be adding OH to the OH to one side of the double bond and H to the other side of the double bond. Since this does follow Markovnikov's rule, what we'll do is the OH will go to the more substituted and the H will go to the less substituted. Um, so if we were to look at another example, this is the same example from before, we're going to add H3O+, plus, and we'll see that the OH will go to the tertiary center, the poor substitute center. Now, since this does form an sp2 hybridized intermediate, and we'll examine the, um, the, uh, the reasoning for this in a second, um, the stereochemistry at the addition points are scrambled, and we'll look at that uh, now. So let's look at this example. So we have, um, we're going to add acid to our uh, alkene. We have our delta positive, our delta negative. Um, just like we saw with HX addition, the first step is going to be protonation of the alkene um, to form a carbocation intermediate. So we're going to form the more stable carbocation. And this is the reason for the, um, the scrambling of stereochemistry. Since we do have an sp2 hybridized intermediate, um, you can have attack from either side. So when this water uh, comes in and attacks, so we have attack by water in the next step, it could attack from uh, either face of this sp2 hybridized uh, bond, which uh, looks, if we were to draw this with, uh, in, with stereochemistry, it would look something like this. So we have uh, two CH3 groups, and then you have your uh, carbocation, which exists in the lone p orbital. So you can have attack from either side, either the top or the bottom, which scrambles stereochemistry. So that's why this is often written as a straight line. Um, so in the next step, so we have a, you know, recombination with the water molecule. This is now protonated. So in the final step, we just need to deprotonate. Often this is done with just another molecule of water to regenerate the acid. And that uh, will deprotonate, uh, generate another equivalent of H3O+. Plus and end up with the secondary alcohol. Um, one thing to note, we used one equivalent of H3O plus and generated one equivalent of H3O plus in the same mechanism, which is why we call this catalytic, which is why this is acid catalyzed hydration. Um, you only need a small amount of acid to get this reaction going um, because you, you only need it to start the first one and then it kind of kicks off and spirals because it's a catalyzed reaction. Um, just like in the last video, we see that uh, anything that generates a carbocation intermediate is going to run the risk of, of um, carbocation rearrangement. 
So for instance, if we do acid catalyzed hydration of this species, we're gonna in the first step protonate the double bond. Um, we'll be left with the secondary carbocation, but we also notice that we have a hydride that can shift nearby. Um, and if we do that hydride shift, we'll see that we move from a secondary carbocation to a tertiary carbocation. So we've moved this hydride here, and then we'll have uh, water recombine and de get deprotonated to instead of form the uh, original Markovnikov secondary. So our original thought would put the OH here, but we'll see that we instead put the OH at the tertiary center. So we make the tertiary alcohol in this case. And this, so this can happen for both um, uh, hydride shifts and methyl shifts. So this presents a problem. So if we instead want to generate um, this alcohol, so if we want that species and we truly do want to generate the secondary alcohol, uh, how do we do that reaction in the way that won't uh, suffer from carbocation rearrangements? And it turns out we do have another reaction in our toolkit um, to get Markovnikov addition of an OH without carbocation rearrangement. And that's going to be our second way to uh, generate alcohols uh, from alkenes, which is going to be called oxymercuration reduction. So uh, just looking at this again, we, this is the same example from before. If we do uh, acid catalyzed hydration of the double, the double bond, we'll end up having a hydride shift and we'll end up with a tertiary alcohol. However, to get the second, truly get the secondary alcohol, we can do a series of steps called oxymercuration reduction. So in the first step, we're going to add uh, mercury acetate and water. And then the second step, and this is a two-step mechanism, you can write it on the same arrow. We're gonna add NABH for sodium borohydride and NaOH. Um, and this combination, um, it avoids uh, the carbocation rearrangement, and it adds, um, it always adds Markovnikov. So um, you don't run the risk of having the carbocation rearrangement when you do oxymercuration reduction. Um, this proceeds through an intermediate, and I'm not going to go over the mechanism, it's beyond the scope of this course, but this, go over, this uh, proceeds through an intermediate where we have uh, OH added to the secondary position, and we have mercury acetate uh, at the terminal position. Um, this is part way through the mechanism and then this gets cleaved by sodium borohydride. So if we're looking to add um, Markovnikov without running the risk of uh, hydride shifts or methyl shifts, oxymercuration is a good, uh, good way to, a good reaction to have in our toolkit. Now there is a third option that we could imagine. So we've done the uh, Markovnikov addition with oxymercuration reduction. We did the Markovnikov addition with the hydride shift to uh, with acid catalyzed hydration. But what if instead of having Markovnikov addition, we wanted anti-Markovnikov addition? So this is anti-Markovnikov. How would we get uh, anti-Markovnikov uh, addition of an alcohol to an alkene? And uh, the one reaction that really works well for anti-Markovnikov addition of an, al to, of an alcohol to an alkene, it's going to be uh, hydroboration oxidation. So just to summarize those three reactions, um, say we have, uh, I'll use that same molecule for uh, instructional purposes. So if we do the acid catalyzed hydration, we're going to end up with the hydride shift and end up with the tertiary alcohol. We now saw that if we do oxymercuration uh, reduction, so that's uh, mercury acetate and water in the first step, followed by sodium borohydride and uh, sodium hydroxide, we will end up with the true Markovnikov addition of the alcohol. We'll end up with the secondary alcohol. But if we want to do anti-Markovnikov addition, um, we have to do something special, which is hydroboration oxidation. So there's two steps similar to the oxymercuration uh, reduction. So in the first step, we're going to add uh, R2BH, and I'll explain what this means in a second. And in the second step, we'll add uh, hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide. So what ends up here is we get the anti-Markovnikov addition. See, we, we generate the primary alcohol versus the secondary alcohol. So we've done an anti-Markovnikov. The H has gone into the secondary position, and the alcohol, the OH, has gone to the less substituted position. Um, so this R2, uh, R2BH 
can appear as many things in the literature. Um, sometimes it's seen as B2H6. Sometimes it's seen as BH3THF. This is a common one. Um, sometimes it's shown as H2B pin. Either way, we're seeing this boron and hydride. Um, and this is because it proceeds through an intermediate that looks something like this, similar to the oxymercuration reduction step. Um, we have our H addition and our BH, our BR2 addition. Um, this was once connected um, across the double bond. So the BR2 goes to the less substitute position. And um, then that's oxidized out to form the OH at the terminal position. Um, nice thing, uh, just to summarize, uh, acid catalyzed hydration, so H plus catalyzed hydration is going to be our Markovnikov, um, but you also run the risk of C plus rearrangement. Um, the oxymercuration is good if you want to do Markovnikov addition um, without C plus rearrangement, so you don't run the risk of having carbocation rearrangement with uh, oxymercuration reduction. And then finally, the hydroboration is going to be anti Markovnikov, meaning it goes to the less substituted position. And this also has no carbocation rearrangement, so you don't have to worry about uh, any hydride or metal shifts in the middle for either the uh, oxymercuration or the hydroboration portions of addition of alcohols to alkenes. If we also do want to talk briefly about stereochemistry, um, we saw that in the acid catalyzed hydration, the stereochem, since it does proceed through a uh, carbocation rearrangement, or carbocation intermediate rather, the stereochem gets scrambled. Um, but the oxymercuration and the hydroboration um, do not proceed through that intermediate. So these proceed um, in stereochemistry that is called a syn addition. Um, so syn addition means they add to the same side of the double bond. Um, so let's see what that looks like. So let's look at something that is prochiral, meaning when it has a, undergoes addition on the alkene, it's going to produce a um, chiral molecule. So this is a prochiral molecule, meaning it can form a chiral a chiral species once it's uh, functionalized. So we'll do oxymercuration uh, reduction. So we have a, uh, mercury acetate and water followed by NaBH4 and NaOH. This is going to add Markovnikov, which means our OH is going to add to the more substitute position. Um, so we have our OH and our H. Actually, let me, let me make this a um, truly a functionalized molecule. So we'll add an ethyl group here. Um, but what is the stereochemistry of these two positions? So we see that the OH and the H are going to be cis to one another. Um, if you end up with two functionalized groups that are cis to one another coming from an alkene, we call this a syn addition, meaning they added to the same side of the double bond. So what we would really draw, if we were drawing stereochemistry, is say I point the methyl back and I have the OH forward, and then I have the ethyl back and I have the H pointing forward. So the OH and the H are sin to one another. Um, and uh, similar to if we had the uh, hydroboration oxidation, they would also be sin to one another. Um, turns out this could go either way um, because uh, both of these positions are tertiary. Um, just note that one thing you would have to do is you would have to write plus enantiomer because, as you can imagine, we could add from the top side of the double bond or the bottom side of the double bond. So while that structure is likely, um, the enantiomer is also likely. So we could have uh, the OH and the H facing down. So both of these structures are equally likely. So you could just write one of them and write plus enantiomer. And just keep in mind that if the enantiomer uh, is generated, um, make sure you're indicating whether it's an enantiomer or a diastereomer. So if we had a chiral position somewhere else in this molecule, we would have to write plus diastereomer to indicate that the, the addition was syn, but did generate a diastereomer in the process.